So thankfully, the slightly harrowing trend of smartphones grown increasingly ridiculously huge seems to have flatlined at just under the 7 inch mark. Definitely a small mercy before we're all forced to walk around wearing massive freaking clown pants with pockets like inside out parachutes. You know I love you 80s, but seriously, that was not a good luck. And as the owner of tiny child-sized hands and stumpy fingers, I definitely prefer reviewing more compact blowers compared with the usual monstrosities. But sadly, fun-sized phones are ruddy hard to track down in 2022. Every year I try and produce a roundup of my favourite compact smartphones at that time, and every single year it becomes considerably more difficult to compile. Hence, quite a few of the phones in this roundup are around the sort of 6 inch plus mark, unfortunately, but that is pretty much considered mini these days. So anyway, here's my roundup of the best compact phones right now. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So now that Google has sadly supersized its flagship blowers, you have to look to its mid-range mobiles for more hand-friendly design. With Google I.O. just around the corner, the Pixel 6a should be launching imminently, but for now your best bet is definitely the Pixel 5a or the Pixel 5a 5G as it is officially known. That is, so long as you actually live in the States or somewhere that stocks it, because here in Blighty you'll have to go through the ball ache of actually importing it. Sadly, this means yes, I haven't reviewed the Pixel 5a, but you can expect a reasonably compact water resistant design and some solid mid-range specs. The Snapdragon 765G chipset should handle everyday shenanigans and light gaming no worries, with the added bonus of 5G support. Google's OLED display is bright and poppy like those Pixel flagships, while the 4680mAh battery should mean you get a full day of play from each charge. And best of all, you've got the same fantastic camera hardware as was found packed onto the Pixel 5, and this can snap great looking shots day or night, helped along of course by Google's image processing smarts. Now, 12 megapixel primary sensor is certainly highly dependable, and you also have an alternative ultra wide angle shooter if you need it. Alternatively, you may still be able to snaffle the Pixel 4a, though here in the UK, Google has officially stopped selling it on its online store. Powered by the slightly lesser Snapdragon 730G chipset, the Pixel 4a can still pretty much do anything you need, including a tasty bit of light gaming on the side. Definitely do not expect the Pixel 4a to cope with more demand and fare like Genshin Impact, however, and sadly there's no 5G support here. And while you do miss out on the Pixel 5a's ultra-wide angle camera lens, you do still get that same 12 meg primary sensor, and as I mentioned, it is a bit of a belter, capturing great looking photos, even in light in its total cack. Those media chops are once again on point with a gorgeous OLED screen and dependable Bluetooth connectivity, as well as an actual ruddy headphone jack. And as it's a Google phone, you still have OS and security update support, even though the Pixel 4a is coming up to its second birthday. Now, a bloody good Pixel rival that you can snaffle right now is the ASUS Zenfone 8, which at just 5.9 inches is very hand-pleasing indeed. Factor in the helpful one-handed mode, and you can forget ever having to lay both mitts on this thing, while the plain yet rugged design means the Zenfone 8 should happily survive if you fumble it onto a concrete floor. There's no micro SD support once again, but you do have a headphone jack as well as a respectable stereo speaker setup, plus another gorgeous OLED display, this time supporting a tasty bit of 120Hz refresh action. Camera tech is almost on par with those Google phones, once again capturing realistic shots across all kinds of conditions. While performance is a big step beyond the pixels, as ASUS has stuffed Qualcomm's mighty Snapdragon 888 chipset inside that mini frame, backed by up to a frankly ludicrous 16 gigs of RAM to keep things running super silky smooth. So yeah, gaming on whatever you like ain't a problem. However, just when you think that the Zenfone 8 might be pretty much the perfect compact smartphone, unfortunately, like a lot of mini handsets, the battery life is rather cack. Now, if you're more tempted by a spot of iOS action rather than Android, well, definitely check out Apple's fresh new iPhone 13 mini. This 5.4 inch titch is undoubtedly my favorite of Apple's flagship smartphones because not only is it pleasingly hand friendly, but also it packs basically the same specs as the regular iPhone 13, and it's the least ridiculously overpriced of all of the Apple flagships. And yes, you can get the fresh new iPhone SE third generation for considerably cheaper, but that would be serious folly. I mean it, right? If the iPhone 13 mini is an all-inclusive fortnight on some sun-kissed tropical island, well, the iPhone SE is a wet weekend on ones with common, with someone repeatedly booting you in the crotch. But anyway, more on all that shenanigans in a bit. Unfortunately, the iPhone 13 mini does spot the same weird retro brick-like design as its bigger siblings, but in this form factor, it's not uncomfortable to clutch, while one-handed use is refreshingly simple. 
Apple has finally toughened up its handset so they stay fresh and scratch free with the added bonus of full water resistance. It's not all good news sadly, the OLED screen does top off at 60Hz and you still have that ridiculous Dr. Robotnik moustache notch to contend with. But still, performance is top draw and the battery life is good enough to see you through a fairly busy day. And I was impressed with the dual lens rear camera setup as well, which is dependable at most times of the day and does a bang up job for your home movies. So definitely check out my full in-depth iPhone 13 mini review if you want to know more. And yeah, if you are after an iPhone, well definitely try and spend that extra cash on the mini rather than resorting to the new iPhone SE. It's the smartphone equivalent of herpes. Seriously, one of the happiest moments of 2022 for me so far was finishing my review of this bag of bollocks and ripping my SIM right out of it again. What's so bad about it? Well, take your pick from the outdated design, the horrendously bad battery life, that woefully inadequate camera tech, the frankly insulting amount of storage which isn't expandable, the ugly display, the list just goes on and on, but hey, it does have wireless charging support and the same A15 chipset as the iPhone 13 mini, so that's nice. Kind of like sprinkling some glitter on a steaming dog turd. Now, if you're a mobile gamer or a bit of a pro when it comes to photography shenanigans, well, you might be tempted by Sony's pleasingly dinky Xperia 5 series smartphones. The Xperia 5 Mark III is a more compact 6.1 inch version of Sony's Xperia 1 flagship phone. You've got almost the exact same hardware here, including another stunning cinema-wide 120Hz OLED screen with bugger all notches obstructing your view. Apple definitely take note. Plus Sony's usual upscale and smarts can bring low-res video to life, boosting the contrast and resolution for more lifelike results. Gamers too are well serviced by the slick performance and Sony's excellent set of mobile gaming features. The Xperia 5 Mark III can blaze through Call of Duty Mobile with stunning 120 frame per second visuals. However, this handset does heat up under duress so you won't want to push it too hard or game on it for hours at a time. Now when it comes to the camera tech, if you want a basic point and shoot automatic experience you'll definitely be better off with the likes of the Pixels, the Zen phones and of course those iPhones. And by those iPhones, I do indeed mean the iPhone 13 mini, not the iPhone SE, that's a sack of cack. However, if you'd rather have yourself a proper serious DSLR style camera setup on your smartphone, well, the Xperia 5 is going to be so far up your alley, there's a good chance it'll become permanently stuck. You can certainly get some slick looking pics with Sony's blower and some stylistic video too if you use Cinema Pro. It's definitely a lot of fun to piddle about with on your travels. Now if your pants pockets happen to be stuffed to the brim with all kinds of lovely cash, well a good way of getting rid of a large wodge of it all in one go is by splashing out on one of them there bendy phones. Some foldables are still proper whoppers, even when they're folded up they are big chunky monkeys and of course once they're unfurled they're the size of a friggin tablet. But not all bendy phones are absolute whoppers. For instance, the rebooted Moto Razr phone sports a 6.2 inch screen when it's unfolded so it's still easy enough to use one handed. And when it is all closed up, the Moto Razr 5G is ridiculously teeny, so you can basically shove it anywhere you like. Most bodily orifices included, though not medically sanctioned. And with that teensy secondary display, you can easily check your notifications and even use your apps without having to unfurl this clever wee chappy. You've got the regular Snapdragon 765 running proceedings here, backed by 8 gigs of RAM, and you've also got a pretty decent 48 megapixel primary camera if you just want to shoot your everyday surroundings. Battery life is still a bit pants, sadly, just like the iPhone SE, so it's light use only. Plus, yeah, the Razer also has an annoying notch that's not quite as bad as the iPhones, but it is still kind of rubbish. Samsung also offers its own version of a compact foldable in the form of the slightly clunkily titled Galaxy Z Flip 3, which will lighten your wallet to the tune of around a grand. This serves up a similar design to the Razer, but with Samsung's One UI launcher slapped on top of Android. The 6.7 inch internal OLED is an absolute beaut as usual and you once again have a dinky external display for checking notifications and the like. Performance is decent and there's a respectable 12 meg camera for snapping your existence. Although like Moto's bendy blow, the battery life isn't fantastic so definitely heavier users will want to look elsewhere. If you'd rather opt for a more traditional Samsung phone then the fresh Galaxy S22 might make you very happy indeed. This 6.1 incher is one of very few compact phones to actually emerge in 2022 and in most ways it is a fantastic flagship. One handed use isn't a chore and there is even a one handed mode if you're still struggling. And despite those flat-ish edges, the S22 is still comfortable enough to grow up. 
You've got a more premium finish with this year's model, so gone is the glastic arse of last year's S series, with full water resistance once again on board. And Samsung has nearly completely nailed the media experience here as well, slapping on a stunning 120Hz OLED display and you've got flawless Bluetooth streaming. The fresh 50 megapixel camera is a match for the iPhone and most other rivals, especially when it comes to home movies. Performance is good enough to handle everything I chucked at it, and like other Sammy handsets, you've got a feature-packed UI with impressive customization. However, as with most compact smartphones, the major pain in the arsehole region with the Samsung Galaxy S22 is that battery life, which once again is woefully short. You will certainly be lucky to get a full day out of this thing with a single charge unless you are really, really easy on it. I basically don't turn it on very much and you should be all right. Which brings me nicely onto one of my surprise favorite phones of 2022 thus far, the staggeringly miniature Xiaomi 12, which is pleasingly pocket-sized and yet still a flagship phone in every way. That glass design is hardy and also smudge-proof to keep it looking fresh, and when you flip it over, you can't help but fall in love with that stunning 6.28-inch OLED screen which spaffs out crisp, punchy visuals, complete with HDR10+, and Dolby Vision streaming support. A Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset runs the show, and even when you lean hard on the Xiaomi 12 by boosting Genshin Impact's graphics to top levels, the cooling system keeps things from getting toasty. You've got a respectable stereo speaker setup too, although like most premium phones, no headphone jack and no memory card support. And for your photo and video needs, the Xiaomi 12's camera tech performs admirably, even in the evenings. There's full pro controls if you want them, otherwise the auto mode does a bang up job. However, the best thing about the Xiaomi 12, the one thing that elevates it over most of its compact competition is the excellent battery life. When I was testing it out, this thing kept me going all day, every day. So if you want a solid compact smartphone, you're not gonna have to top up midway through the afternoon. Well, definitely job done. So that right there is my roundup of the best mini smartphones you can grab yourself in 2022. And yes, some of them are getting on a little bit now. Some of them are still over six inches, quite a few of them in fact. But as I say, this list is getting harder and harder to compile. So this time next year, God even knows if I'll even be able to do one of these videos. Especially as apparently the iPhone 13 mini ain't selling too well. But Asus may have another Zenfone coming out later this year. You've got the likes of the Google Pixel 6 here lingering on the horizon. So there is still hope for us stubby fingered folk. In the meantime, if I missed out your own personal favourite compact handsets, so definitely clue me in down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.